What is up, guys? Dr. Roger Pinta, the pre-med product expert, and today I'm answering one of your questions. It was submitted to me on my station on anchor.fm. If you have not already, download the app. You can call into my station, ask me any question you want, and get an answer just like this back. Um, if this is your first time joining me, who am I? Why should you be listening to me? Well, I am the ultimate pre-med productivity expert, guys. I can help you be a better student, study better. I can help you understand what it means to do admissions and getting into medical school and help you succeed in medical school. So all the way through your continuum, I'm your guy to help you out and help you be your best. Um, like I said, I mentioned one of your questions today. It was submitted to me by Nicole. Thank you so much, Nicole, for calling into my station. Um, your question was simple. Uh, it was that you are interested in cardiothoracic surgery and possibly even pediatric cardiothoracic surgeon. So you want to be in school forever, clearly, because you want to go through residency, through fellowship, through all these things, a bunch of this stuff. Um, but your question is, does it matter which medical school you go to if you want to go into cardiothoracic surgery? And it's an actually a really good question. It's a high level question that I think people don't often think about. And this is why, you know, when you guys hear me bash Caribbean schools or certain things like that is people haven't thought through what their best preference is. Right? And when we settle, when we choose things not that are not optimized for what we want, we risk not getting what we truly want. And in this case, if you want to go into cardiothoracic surgery, it is a very niche surgery specialty. And so when you go for medical school, and a lot of people don't know this, when you apply to residency after medical school, it's just like the medical school application process. You have to fill out the applications, get the letters of recommendation, they ask for your board exam scores, which are like the MCAT, but for medical school, and all this stuff. And so it is very competitive for certain specialties. Something like cardiothoracic surgery, residency programs will only take one or two at most residents a year per, per, per program. So, for example, at Stanford, where I went to medical school, as a residency, a cardiothoracic surgery residency, we took one resident a year. Imagine that. Of all the residents in the country that want to go to Stanford for cardiothoracic surgery, only one can get in. And it's the same thing at UC San Diego. We take two cardiothoracic uh, residents a year. That's how it goes. And so it's very selective in that way, and it's a small community. So if you're interested in going to cardiothoracic surgery, it's important if when you're choosing a medical school, it does matter which school you choose. And you should pick a school that has a couple criteria. One, you need to pick a school that has some big name people who can make calls on your behalf and could write letters of recommendation. You want that because when it comes to residency, uh, residency admission, unlike medical school admission, it is a lot more of who you know and somewhat of what you know, but also who you know and who knows you. And so you're going to want to have people who have the name and have the contacts to call other programs on your behalf. That's the first thing. The second thing is that you're going to want to go to a medical school that has a cardiothoracic surgery unit. Why? Because if you go to a medical school that doesn't have that department, how can you get adequate experience in order to be able to tell residency programs that you know what it is to be a cardiothoracic surgeon? that you've lived the life at least for a little bit. And then also as the, the other side of that, right? You can say, oh, I know what cardiothoracic surgery is. But when you apply, just like when you apply to medical school, your letters of recommendation provide validation of what you say. And so when you apply to residency programs, you want a cardiothoracic surgeon to be able to write your letter of recommendation. Well, if, you're to, if your school has no cardiothoracic surgery residency, how can they then write you a letter for residency? Right? If you have no cardiothoracic department, there are no cardiothoracic surgeons. So you want to make sure that you go to a school that actually has a program. In addition to being able to write your letter of recommendation and get you out of that program, the other great benefit of having a cardiothoracic surgery residency in your school is that you actually have an option to stay where you already are for medical school. It's like in life. We'd rather take a chance on a known quantity than take a chance on something on the unknown, right? the uncertainty. So if you are at a medical school and they know you in the cardiothoracic surgery department, you have a better shot of getting in there than other places. And that's why a lot of medical students choose who stay in competitive specialties, choose to stay actually at their university is because it's an easier route to getting into that competitive specialty. So Nicole, I hope that answers your question. It does matter which medical school you go to. You want one that has cardiothoracic surgery department. That way you can have the in in your own department, but then also that way you can contact out and get the letter recommendations you need to get to other departments as well. Pretty simple, right? But cardiothoracic surgery is awesome. I have some great cardiothoracic surgery stories that I'll share with you guys uh, in the future. Next time, maybe I'll get into some of those stories. 
but you guys know who it is. It's Dr. Andre Pineset, the pre-med productivity expert. And if you guys liked this video, if you have concerns about choosing a medical school, well, I go into great depth about choosing a medical school and what it means for your residency prospects in my course, How to Dominate Pre-Med, The Definitive Guide. This course, there's nothing like this anywhere, guys. I'm an outstanding, right, pre-med advisor. But what if I told you if you took this course, you wouldn't need me because I took all my expertise and I bottled it into one course for you. I talk about transitioning into college, talk about how to pick your classes, what activities to be involved in, how medical schools are going to evaluate you. And I leave that all the way up to the application and the personal statement where I walk you step by step through getting the perfect application and the perfect personal statement. And at the very end of that course, I talk about now that you've gotten accepted because you're the perfect medical school applicant, how do you then choose which school is right for you and will set you up for the future? So this course is amazing. It's comprehensive. It's all there. It's on my website, www.premedproductivity.com. The link is below in the description. You can see, check it out there. Um, also, make sure you guys subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to my channel. Follow me on social media. That way you guys don't miss out anytime I'm giving out outstanding advice. Thank you so much, Nicole, for submitting your question. And thank you guys for tuning in. I will see you next time. Later, guys.